All right, what is going on everybody and welcome to yet another Python and uh, robotics tutorial video. In this video we're going to be building on the last one and this time we're going to allow uh, key input from a user into our robot so we can actually control our robot since we don't have any actual sensors that will allow us to make our robot autonomous at this time. So uh, what you're going to need to do at this point is one of two things. Either you're going to need to plug in a mouse, a wireless keyboard, and an HDMI monitor to your uh, Raspberry Pi, or uh, you can remote desktop in. If you do not know how to remote desktop in, I do have a video uh, for that. I will put a link to it in the description so you can do that as well. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and continue. So just as a reference of where we are, um, we're now in here. Uh, the only reason I really want to bring this up actually is uh, if you don't have remote desktop you would do sudo apt get install xrdp then you can use uh, remote desktop that's like in, built into your Windows uh, PC. So that aside, I'm actually not going to use that right now because I, coding at idle is somewhat easier. So we'll go into accessories, file manager, and then up here, click on robotics, that's the directory we had, and we've been working on robot 2. Uh, go ahead and just copy that and paste that. I'm not sure if it's thinking, or maybe we not we didn't get a good copy in or something. It should work, we'll see, CP. Okay, for whatever reason, right clicking wasn't working, but control C, control P worked. And this time we'll call it robot3.py, rename. Now we have robot3.py, so right click that. Uh, for whatever reason, open with idle isn't here, so I'm going to use open with. And programming and idle. Okay. <clears throat> so then we wait a minute for that to open up. Let me go ahead and edit. Um, Edit this to be a little bit larger so it's easier for everyone to see. 20, bold, apply. All right, there we go. And I'll just make it full screen. So uh, now we've got uh, all of this code. And now what we want to do is we actually want to program um, some sort of way for us to enter input. Well the problem with Python is it runs as a script and in order to give input the best thing we really have is input or raw input uh, natively anyways with Python. What you're going to have to do is start implementing some use of either C or Java and luckily Python actually works with C very well naturally Python is actually C Python and so we can use a little bit of C uh, and what we're gonna have to do is kind of a hacky way around it uh, or about going about doing this um, and you could probably do it easier in pure Java or like JavaScript or something like that but we like Python so we're gonna do it in Python so the first thing that we want to do is we're gonna use tkinter and we also want um, I think if we want, yeah, I think we'll take, we might use system as well. So let's go ahead and do import SYS for system. And then also we're going to import capital T Kinter as TK. Now what we want to do is we actually want to, you know, create this window. So let's go scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> we'll get rid of pivot right. We don't need that anymore. Let's make some more space. And now what we want to have is some way for us to register a keys input. So we're going to define key underscore input and the parameter will be event. And then we're going to uh, we're going to run initiate uh, initiate here instead of uh, in each of these. So go ahead and delete all of your initiate uh, initiates here, 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 and here. And here, wow, we have more of these functions than I thought we had. And here, okay. So make sure you get rid of all your init uh, empty params because we're now we're going to put it in key input. And then what we're going to end up doing is depending on the key input, we'll do something that might be go forward, go reverse, whatever. But each time it's going to be something else. Uh, so anyway, so that's what we've got going on there. 
Now, what we're going to do is let's go ahead and print whatever key we used. Um, event dot character. And then now key underscore press equals event dot character. And then sleep underscore time is going to equal I, something. Let's do 0 0.030. And now we actually want to start programming what our keys are going to be. So the arrow keys are actually not too easy. Uh, I'm not sure what the special name for an arrow key is. So what we're going to end up using is the W, A, S, D, Q, and E. So W will be forward, S will be reverse, A will be turn left, D will be turn right, Q will be pivot left or counterclockwise, and E right or clockwise. So we're going to use if key underscore press dot lower, just in case the user accidentally leaves their caps lock on, equals W. Then we're going to do forward uh, sleep time. So we can edit sleep time later, and we don't have to like edit all of the versions of it. <clears throat> so if that's the case, we're going to move forward. Elif key press dot lower equals s. Well, what did we say s was? Well, that's obviously reverse. Reverse sleep time. Elif key press dot lower equals a. That's a will be a turn left for sleep time l if key press dot lower equals d that will be a turn right for sleep time and then uh, we've done the wasd so now we want to do the q and e so l if key press dot lower equals q then we're going to use pivot left for sleep time. We should have called sleep time like ST. <laughs> and then LF key press dot lower equals E pivot underscore right for the sleep time. Okay, that should be everything for key input. Now the next thing that we want to do is scroll down a little bit and actually I guess we have enough space really for what we're going to put in. So I'll leave key input there for anybody who wants to pause. Now we're going to say uh, we'll call this I guess <clears throat> I don't know command equals tk dot capital T underscore k so command equals tk dot key tk then com oops, command and command dot bind and here what we want to bind this is you have to type this exactly key press we want to bind the key press as key or key press key input now we want to run command dot main loop and that should be it so now what we're going to get here is when we run this, we're going to get a little window that pops up. And as long as we're in that window, whatever key we press, it's going to log that key. And it's going to log that key for 0 0.030 seconds. If anybody can give me a way to know how to like log like when it's as long as the key is down, uh, that would be great. Uh, and to like wait that long, I'm not really sure how, how to get that to set up. So um, this just seems like an easy, quick way to show you guys. So that's why I've gone with it. So anyway, we'll save that. And I guess we could just run it via idle, even though well, the problem with idle is idle is so slow. So actually, I don't really want to run it through idle, because once you start pasting a bunch of stuff, it'll slow down. So actually, this is robots 3pi so we'll exit out of this. <clears throat> and we saved our idle here, so let's just bring this up. And let's CD into robotics. Make sure it's there. So there's a robot 3pi So now we can do sudo python robot3.py hit enter and oh I guess we did bind instead of blind let's let's go back and look at uh, 
what we've done. I think we just typoed when we did command dot bind. I probably typed blind. Then I was too blind to miss it or see it. Let's go back down to the bottom. Yeah, show enough. <laughs> command dot blind. Okay, <clears throat> so fix that, save that. Hopefully, no one else typed blind. Uh, anyway, coming back over here, let's try that one more time. And here's our little window. So as we press something, like I'll press P. Oh, it's very unhappy with P. <laughs> anyway. Oh, see, we've got a lot of lag going on in our in my window here. I think I'd rather use, um, well, maybe if I put this down, let's see. I'll just minimize this, maybe. Maybe that'll help. There we go. That helped a little bit. It was having problems uh, relaying the data back to that screen. Anyway, so minimize it and just be in this window. So I press W, and sure enough, it goes forward, and I'm, like, kind of tapping it and stuff. So you can, like, tap it, or you can hold it, and it'll go. And then you can turn, turn, pivot. Pivot backwards, forwards. Now, I wonder though, <laughs> uh, we do have a small problem. If you hit any other key, it just does weird things. <laughs> I think it just maybe runs what the last thing was. I'm not sure. Maybe what we need to do though is go to the bottom and where we have elif, elif, elif else let's just run a pass let's see if that'll work for us <clears throat> so first let's close out of this TK window and I guess we'll leave this up just in case we need to do any more editing let's bring this back up and we'll run this again and in fact let me let me if I make this window smaller because I'd just like to show you he's at least streaming the Come on, window. <laughs> okay, good enough. All right, <clears throat> so we run it. Here's our window. W is forward. Still a little laggy, but not so bad. Just works better if you're not. Uh... See, at least this is like kind of streaming it like every, you know, 0 0.03 seconds. Anyway, I'm gonna minimize it now. Let's hit another key. Yeah, for some reason, whenever we hit another another key, it goes crazy. But as long as you hit a key that it is expecting, it doesn't do anything. Maybe if I hit another key, we could just run cleanup or something. I'm trying to think of how... I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'll have to look at it later. Feel free to leave a comment if you want uh, on what you think is happening or why it's running random stuff whenever you... See, it goes in reverse. Now I go forward. Yeah, it seems to want to do like whatever the last whatever the last thing was. So maybe we should run like a cleanup or something. Uh, I bet that would do it. Anyway, uh, that's going to conclude the video. We've got our commands now, so you should be able to control your car. You know, do whatever you want, turn it, and all this. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll put the top on the car, and the next video uh, we'll go ahead and run the car somewhere the motors are weak so as you can see I've got carpet in this room but I do have like some laminate floor in my kitchen and I'll run it in there and we can see how how this robot actually does so uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying if you do have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and the subscriptions and until the next video